Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I uh, am with my friend Tim Ross, and I'm so excited for you to get to meet him. And we're going to dive into um, a really sticky topic. And, I, and it's Monday when we're recording this, so it's even more sticky. Uh, you ever have Monday morning where you wake up as a pastor and say, is it time for me to step down? <laughs> And Monday, if you've been around me any amount of time, Monday, we get more calls from people thinking it's time than all six other days combined. Wow. <laughs> so I used to have, Tim, I used to have a, a auto voicemail back when it was just me running the thing way back in the day. Yeah. And I said it on Mondays and it'd say, you know what, just call me back on Tuesday. Everything's going to be good. That's right. It's true. It's very true. You need another day to sleep. <laughs> Don't quit on Monday. But, That's right. Don't quit on Mondays. There is a way to learn what God's doing so you do know when it's time and you don't hang on too long. And I want to dive into that a little bit. Before we do that, I I get to meet so many great people. And I don't know that everybody knows you, Tim. You've got a ton of people that know you that I don't know. But why don't you just take a minute and give us a little bit of background. Let us know, you know, a little bit of your story. Absolutely. So my name is Tim Ross. I'm originally from Southern California, Inglewood, uh, to be exact. Uh, born and raised there. Uh, gave my life to Jesus in 96. Moved to Texas in 97. And after spending time as a youth evangelist, young adult pastor, associate campus pastor, executive pastor, uh, we were sent to plant a church in 2015. It's a church that I planted for seven years. And uh, December 31st of 2002 uh, was my last day as a lead pastor. Now I spend my time as a podcaster and an influencer. And who would have ever thought that? <laughs> so 2022, right? 2022. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So it's still pretty fresh. Uh, yeah. and, and we had the pleasure of, uh, of getting to help your church, Embassy City, several Walking times the road of, of what yeah. that succession would look like who it would be I, I wish i could say that every time we we manage a succession and a search it goes as smoothly as yours did uh, we, we were actually kind of funny able to uh find a successor that is also named tim so <laughs> <that's kinda cool. laughs> absolutely it's like uh first timothy and second timothy you know that's uh, right <laughs> which is uh what happened when tim stevens left here to go the exec pastor at Willow, he raised up a guy from within, also known as uh, Second Timothy, and now he's wow, he's, yeah, yeah, God, that's awesome, yeah, that's God, cool. God, God loves Tim's. God loves Tim's. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I wonder, like, you know, when I get a call, call and uh, your exec pastor called me at the time and said, "Hey, we're thinking this is what we're going to do, but we're not sure." I just remember saying, "What's really going on?" Why would somebody step down in the middle of a amazing season, yep. prime of life, yep. prime ministry, and I get paid in some part to be a little skeptical and say, ah, no, what's underneath all this, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and and I, I guess, uh, I guess I was wrong to be skeptical here because your church is doing great. You're doing great. It's early. It's early. Yeah. Yeah. Things seem to be going well. So how do you, in the middle of the prime of your life, walk us through what God did in your heart to, to make you go, yeah, no, I, I think it's time. Yeah, so um, I, I, I went to school to be um, a homicide detective. I studied uh, administration of justice. So, I, so everything in my mind is very picturesque. And uh, it's sequential. So you ask me a question like that, I, I can give it to you in the sequence that it happened. So um, back in September of 2021, during our sixth anniversary, this would have been the sixth anniversary of the church that month. The end of the month, we had a, a, a friend of mine uh, come speak. And at the end of the message, uh, she asked us to come up on the platform, Juliet and I, at the end of the service in front of everybody. And uh, she just gave an encouraging word over myself, Juliet, and the entire church. And it's one of them words that, you know, you hear it and you're like, yeah, I, I, think, I think we're on the right track. God is doing something. This is confirmation. And we, at the time, we were looking for a building. There was a fry that, that had just gone out of business. There was a, um, a place less than half a mile 
down the street from us that went out of business. And so we were looking for new property. So we thought the word of encouragement that we received had something to do with that growth. Four days later, I'm in a hotel room at 5 a.m. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, hey, you need to go listen to that word again. And when I went to go listen to the word again, I, I, I promise you, I thought it was overdubbed. Like I thought somebody tinkered with the, the vocals because <laughs> I'm like, wow. I did not hear, I didn't hear this four days ago. Well, in hindsight, William, what I know now is that the word that we received in public was a decoded, was an encoded message. And he decoded, decoded the message privately. Because mm-hmm. it would have been, I think, I think our guests would have got stoned if uh, they all heard the same thing that I heard uh, at 5 a.m. four days later. But what I essentially heard uh, in a nutshell four days later was your season as a lead pastor is coming to an end. Wow. And I burst into tears because I'm like, did I do something wrong? It, it, did I strike the rock twice? You know, I'm going through all of my biblical references and I'm going, right, right, what, right. what have I done? And uh, that's what set us on a journey uh, over the next uh, year and a half, really. Well, actually over the next year um, of clarity with God just letting us know, hey, your, your assignment as a lead pastor is, is coming to an end and I have something, I have something else for you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And ha- so like, you know, when people say, so I, I grew up Presbyterian, right? So yep. and some people have seen this before, but this is, this is the Presbyterians worshiping, right? And yeah. we get, <laughs> you know, if we get a charismatic moment, this is us, right? That's it. <laughs> right. All you get. So like, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, in Presbyterian church, you come and say, well, the Lord spoke to me and told me this, this, and this. I'm going to say, you sure it wasn't the enchiladas last night, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So how, how do you discern when it's God speaking and when it's just a bad mood? Or yeah, Absolutely. Uh, what, what are some, some things you do to test a word to make sure that it's something God's saying to you rather than your emotions? Yeah. So, so um, the, the way that I've always uh, classified um, a confirming word from God is that uh, the other trusted people that are in my life hear the same thing. Hmm. So, so I refer to them, William, as divine echoes, right? The difference between enchiladas and echoes is that if it's enchiladas, only you hear it. If it's echoes, everybody else you love hears it, even if they don't want to, hmm. right? So hmm. like for, for my elders to hear it, for my wife to hear it, for my executive pastor to hear it, for my executive creative director to hear it, for my worship pastor to hear it, for my admin to hear it. Now, they didn't all hear it at the same time. It takes patience. <laughs> you know, you submit what you feel like you've heard and you gotta, you gotta trust God's timing in allowing them to hear the same thing. And so uh, when you're waiting for those echoes, uh, it can take some time. I know it was about, it was about three months for my wife to come around to even feel like, yeah, this is, this is what we feel like the Lord is saying. When I first told her, her exact words were, you might as well be telling me to put one of my kids up for adoption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she was like, uh-uh, this cannot be what God's telling us to do. And three months later, she was like, yeah, our season is coming to an end. <laughs> what changed? Um, I, you know what? I, that's one of those works that, I, I can only attribute to God and um, him moving on the heart and us having continued conversations. We didn't brood in frustration and in silence, you know, you know, throwing uh, prayer jabs at one another. God, let her see it. God, I hope he wakes up. You, you know, we kept right. talking as uncomfortable as those conversations were. We kept on talking and um uh, the more we talked and the more we went through the nuances and the more we uh, shed tears and the, and the more we were, were very, very honest with each other, we were in agreement that, man, we have no idea what's next, but we know that this season is coming to an end. And that was around, that was January of 22 that we were in agreement that, you know what, this is, this is, 
the beginning of the end. She thought it was three more years. She wanted to round off at a nice 10. <laughs> and um, I actually thought it was going to be this year, 2023. I thought it would be September of this year. And obviously, uh, God's timing isn't ours. And uh, he didn't uh, fulfill her expectations or mine. <laughs> Uh, in terms of when we thought it would be, it was actually December 31st of 22. What, what, uh, Tim, as you watched for echoes, you, you, or listened for echoes, I guess what you'd say. Yeah. Where do you hear them in the, I'm sure you're looking at this, this church that God birthed, but he used you. So it's like one of your kids as you watch it. It is. It so, is. Like, how are you examining your church to say, where do I see? evidence of echoes like in the church itself and how they might be better served for a new voice yeah yeah it makes perfect sense so you know everybody's scenario and story is going to be different but for me um one of the things that uh uh the lord made very very clear to me uh in 2022 was hey check your schedule and uh at the halfway mark of the year, which would have been, actually, uh, it would have been, um, it really would have been June for us because uh, I was the guest speaker for the whole month for Gateway and just showed the video back to our church. <clears throat> so for the first six months of the year, I had only been in the pulpit in person for three months. Mm. And I felt like what the Lord was, was sharing with me during that time was, hey, I've been weaning them from your voice and you didn't even know it. Mm. Like they're more prepared for this transition than you think. You think they need a year, a year and a half, two years to, to prepare for this transition. I've been weaning them from your voice and your presence this year and you didn't even know it. Mm. They're going to be okay without you, which is almost like, really? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You're, you got to right. check your ego at that point. You're like, right. Will they be okay without me? He's like, yeah, they will be okay without you. And, yeah. But I, I, I am going through the same thing here. I try every year. I go away a little longer during the <laughs> summer. Yeah. And, and I, I've gone from driving like this as a planter of our business to driving like this in the summer kind of driving like this and every now and then just let's do the no hands for a little bit yeah yeah and and i i tell people i'm trying to make myself um uh, not essential and that's become way too easy a task yeah but <laughs> <laughs> i, I kind of wish i were a little more essential but uh, <laughs> they can take it from here that, that's a they real take statement it from here. <laughs> You know, probably I don't know how it was at Embassy City, but probably baptisms were up and the giving was good and <laughs> all of it, all of it. It really was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, so how do you have the conversation with your board or with your your people? Like, walk me through that so that someone who's sitting here today, and, yep. and by the way, pardon the interruption, but if you're listening carefully, you heard Tim say his last day was December 31st of 2022. And you heard him say he was talking to his wife about this in January of 2022. So what I don't hear you saying, Tim, is I don't think the Lord calls us to impulsive career moves. Absolutely not. Now, there are times where he says, you know, pick up your mat, go home. That's or right. Your nets and follow yeah. me. There are That's moments right. where that happens. But I don't think when you're serving his church, he's going to call you to an impulsive decision you would you say all. that's fair okay I, that is absolutely fair okay because that wouldn't be fair to the people that's right and that's that right. wouldn't be stewardship to the people so i absolutely agree with you well so now you're getting this word you've got echoes going off all around you you can see it in the church you can see it from your your wife starting to talk to you walk me through the conversation that you had with your board the first time yeah so this would have been around, um, I started talking to them early on. So I started sharing this with the board um, in October of 21. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I don't know what it means yet. I'm just submitting it to you. We still need to pray. Juliet and I are not in agreement yet. So this is not going to be a move that I make tomorrow. 
uh, but we need to start praying through this. So the earliest conversations were, you know, the week that I found out. Uh, but after January, those conversations uh, started to become way more significant because it was like, okay, if this is really the Lord, who's your successor, right? And um, what does the timeline even look like? And, you know, when you start off with these, with these conversations, you can only communicate what you know. Yep. You don't, you don't fill in the blanks. Communicate what you know, pray about the rest. That's what I say all the time. Communicate what you know, pray about the rest. Revisit the, revisit the conversations month to month. Even if you have to have offline conversations before your formal board meetings, make sure you have those conversations, but keep reiterating that, hey, I just know what I know. And we're not going to make a move until we're all in agreement. That's where God puts the oil, right? He puts it on unity, according yes. to Psalms, right? So, um, so I'm always thinking about over communicating. Yes. Here is where I am. I'm going to say it again. I don't want there to be any skepticism. I don't want there to be any, you know, squinting of the eyes. I want everybody to be on the same page. And so January, February, March, we started having those conversations. And then, um, you know, there's a young man that I had been mentoring for three and a half years named Tim. And uh, I felt like I, he, he's a great preacher, but I had never, he, he was just my mentee. He had never come to preach at Embassy City before. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, bring him and have him preach. And so I brought him in and I felt like God said, hey, pay attention to him. I'm like, okay. So he preaches his message. I hear it, I hear it later on in the week. He sounds the theologically, right? A preacher is a preacher is a preacher. He's a good preacher. What I picked up on listening to him was how much our congregation laughed. I use so much humor in my messages. because uh, I used to do, I used to be a stand-up comic. So I use a lot of humor in messages. I actually use the humor to open people's hearts up so that the truth goes down either easier right spoonful of sugar so um uh i heard the congregation laughing during his message and i never heard the congregation laugh like that unless it was me and that's what piqued my 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 interest interesting and so i kind of i kept that to myself i didn't bring that to the elders i didn't bring that to my wife and within two and a half weeks, uh, Juliet, unsolicited, unprovoked, just walks up to me and says, hey, babe, um, I don't know what God wants to do, um, but if God chose Tim to be our successor, he and his wife, Janice, I would be more than pleased. And I was shocked. Because wow. my wife was still grieving, right? We were both grieving um, what, what was coming, even though we didn't know, we didn't even have dates and all this kind of stuff yet. And man, I tell you, when she said that, I went, well, it's interesting you say that because I felt like God put him in my heart mm. when, he, when we had him to come to preach. And she goes, well, that's him. Well, what I love about this story, and I I know the other side of it, um, is you didn't do that impulsively either. I, I, and I'll fast forward the story a little bit, but you listened for echoes. Uh, you you treated the bride like a bride. Yes, sir. And uh, you know you 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 what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, you guys, and this sounds like a commercial, but a lot of people feel like a failure if they don't raise up their own successor. Well, that's just not how the church has worked. It's Jesus. No, brother. it's not. If you're multi-site, it's not one church, many locations. It's one kingdom, many correct. locations. Correct. That's correct. Yes. And so there are laborers that you don't know about that you are related to. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> and uh, you guys came to us and said, let's look everywhere. Let's let's turn over every rock, make sure this is right. And it appeared to us to be an echo. And, uh, you know, time will tell, I guess we'll do a podcast in 10 years to see how it all went. But uh, that's right. <laughs> I love the I love the balance of listening for the Holy Spirit's voice, and then testing that witness against uh, 
others against yes echo sir against. so it's just far too often i get people call me and, and they're impulsive yeah and then sometimes i get people that won't call me because they feel embarrassed mm. I, i'm letting jesus down if i leave oh oh man and yeah it, i did a little bit of that when i was a pastor man if i what's gonna happen if i well guess what I'm not very essential around here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's so true. Well, I, you know, I could go on for hours and hours with you about this, and maybe we'll have you back later on to talk. Maybe the three of us could talk. Second Timothy. Yeah, um, that would be amazing because he's brilliant. That would be really cool. But but today, I wanted to just park for a minute. Yep. And say, you know, if you're feeling like it's time to go. Start to listen for echoes. That's right. You know, the one thing is so interesting to me, Tim, the things God brings to my mind when I do this job versus when I was a pastor. And one thing that, um, that I just can't shake is, is I never realized why Jesus got in trouble with his friends. Not Pharisees, mm. Sadducees, but like, why did he get in trouble with his friends? And, and best I can tell, the most common reason he got in trouble was he was always moving on. Wow. He went from town to town and village to village. No, why can't we stay? Nope, we got to go. Wow. Nope, we got to wow. go. Yeah. And and I somehow I I missed that when I was a pastor. I thought, "No, I got to stay." Right. Maybe, maybe, yeah. but yeah. maybe not. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I just encourage uh you all to follow Tim Ross. We're going to put all your social media stuff in the show notes and no that sort of thing. you'll you'll get to laugh um and you'll and you'll be surprised how much god uses tim to speak into your life and i hope that today has been a moment where you might stop and check and say mm, is there an encoded message that needs some decoding and uh, i'm going to pray that you know exactly the right time to leave i've seen a lot of people start well I've seen some people finish well. I've seen very few do both. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's such a joy to see how you've done that well, Tim. I can see it in Embassy City. I can see it in your current life and work. And I, I thank you for making time to be with us today. Very honored to be with you, William. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. And you all tune in next week. We'll be talking to another great leader and trying to learn from them as we figure out how to help the church go farther and faster.